everyone, and welcome to the Vintage Needle Crafter. My name is Laura. Today I thought I'd sit down with you once again and film another little podcast uh, showing you what I've been up to the last week, things I'm working on, and acquisitions that I have planned for the near future. So how is everyone today? Hope you're all enjoying spring. Um, here in Illinois, we've had some really dark and uh, dreary days, lots of rain, cool temperatures. I'm in my uh, craft room today. You see some projects here behind me. <laughs> um, it's really been too cold to go into the front room. It's okay, so I hope you can bear with the lighting. I've tried to adjust it the best I can. Um, so welcome everyone if you are new here. Uh, this is my little channel where I talk about crochet and knitting and projects I'm making and show you what I'm doing and where to find a lot of the things that I am making and working on. Welcome back if you are a returning viewer. I appreciate each and every one of your views, likes, and comments. And please feel free to share my videos as much as you like. Okay, uh, the first step... What I want to show you today, I'll go right into finished objects. And the first finished object that I am wearing is the Peacott's Bill uh, crochet top and um, cinnamon stitches. Uh, the YouTube channel, lovely Jennifer from Cinnamon Stitches, has this tutorial out and she was filming it during premiere week, which was about four weeks ago. But I have finished mine and I'm going to show you the whole thing. At least in here I can kind of scoot my chair back. <laughs> but here it is. I think I showed you last podcast, but it was just too cold to wear. Now, as you can see, this is an open, just my top here. It's an open top and something you would want to wear um, over top of a t-shirt or um, a sleeveless shirt like a tank top like I have on with it so there it is then the whole thing this is called the peacock spill it's a very simple pattern to do it's made in two long panels that go all the way it goes all the way uh, starting at the one end oh, let's see and you go all the way around the back so you're working these two long panels that are sewn together down the front and it really works up quick. And I used for mine, um, a little closer to you. I used the yarn called Karen Cotton. Let's see, no, 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 no. No, I'm sorry, it was <laughs> not Karen. It was Premier Puzzle Cotton. Premier Puzzle Cotton in the colorway Taffy. I had originally bought three of those, those balls and um, I used two a uh, little bit, little bit, little bit under two of those to make that um, sweet morning shawl that I had about four or five podcasts ago. And the other ball I used to make this. Now her, her, um, her tutorial says to do a long band down here, but I did not have enough yarn for that. So I just did mine with a double crochet in the back, all the way around. Yeah, I just did mine with the double crochet. But I love it, love it, love it. It's very breezy, comfortable, airy, light. <laughs> It'll be perfect for summer. I apologize for the lighting in here. It's really quite dull. Uh, but when I turn on the light behind me, everything goes too bright and then it kind of washes out all the colors. So this is a finished object. It's repeated. I did show you this last week, but I didn't wear it. I also finished her Country Roads top. That was the other one that I finished. And that was in greens. It's over here. I'm not going to put this on because uh, I had this in my, I showed you this in my last podcast. Oh, it's inside out. Oh, and you know what I do? For the back, I just do a little piece of uh, yarn to uh, show you, which is, the, well, just, I'm just showing you what I'm doing, but I do that to mark the front from the back. 
But here this is. This is the Country Roads top. It's very comfortable. I just did mine in acrylic. I didn't even use cotton. Although cotton would be much nicer and cooler for summer. When we ever get any warm weather. <laughs> We have had our cold and rainy ones so far this year. Yeah, but it, you know, today is um, April 5th. So by the time you're seeing this, it's probably the 8th or 10th, but today's April 5th and uh, yeah, we're still having cool temperatures, even some snow. <laughs> so yeah, okay, that is the first finished object. The second one I want to show you is just a little side project that I done. And this is vintage. This is a vintage item from around 19, about the mid 1970s. And I'm not sure if you watch All in the Family. Um, I do. I like watching old um, episodes of All in the Family. And I noticed Gloria Stivick's blue hat. It was the episode where her and Mike Stivick were going on an eight day trip in the mountains. And she had on this beautiful open lace work crocheted hat. And I saw it, I go, ooh, I want to make that. So I paused the video and um, I kind of zoomed it up a little bit um, when I was watching it and I thought I can make that. I can make that. And I did. <laughs> Although I did not have the same exact colors the, for, the, for the first one that I made, but I did find the exact same color, or close to the exact same color in my stash. Now, I'm still going to try to get a photo of that so I can show you here. Um, it, I might have been able to find it, and then again, I might not have. <laughs> But I will show you the hat that I finished and the one that I'm working on in the original color. So here, here is the, I'll have to take my headband off, but here is the original, well, not the original color, but this one is just a crazy colors. Because I had in my stash just this oddball of super soft acrylic yarn <laughs> I think it's so cute, and I love the, um, if you can see that, I'll try to get closer to the camera. I just love the uh, open detail, and I just started with, you know, circling around, and then just started with the, um, the open lace detail, increasing until I got to where I didn't want any more decreases, and it was just a um, single crochet and chain four which was made that open. So I really like this. Yes, it's still hat season, but this lets my head breathe a little bit more. So I'm liking that. Now, I did find some lighter um, yarn. Let me get a skein for you. It's over here in my box. I found some in my stash, and I have a whole lot of this in my stash. I bought this from Wool Warehouse. <laughs> And this is just a, um, it's called Robin Double Knit. It is a uh, DK Light. It says it's a number three weight, but to me it seems more like a two. It's a very light acrylic yarn. It's very, very soft. It's a baby yarn, I think. And I'm starting another one. This is my progress so far. I'm starting another one, and like I said, you just go in the round, and then you do that lace. Um, I'm not sure yet if I want to do a tutorial or not. Maybe, um, maybe, in, maybe in the near future here, I may do a tutorial for this little hat. It's so nice, and it's going to be a very nice color. Um, and this is the original color that Gloria Stivic was wearing in that episode. I really... I really need to find that episode, and um, it was actually on television. It just comes on on Sunday nights here when we get it. And it was the episode that I go, oh, there's that hat I admire. And I had my son pause it so I could see, you know, and I was looking at the hat, trying to figure out, 
and I've seen it before and yeah, I just wanted to duplicate it. It's crocheted and, and this one here with this light yarn, uh, I am using a number 3.0 crochet hooks. Now, like I said, I crochet a little larger than the average person. So um, you might want to use a 2.5 or maybe a 2, wh whatever, you know, you just, you just keep going around. And then when you get so far, oof, on your, getting warm in that already, uh, on your head, you just do come down, you just come down for the crown. So you're working down, working down and then in the round. But here that is, it's got all kinds of crazy colors. <laughs> I don't even know what yarn this was at all. I, I have no idea. So finished object and that was a, that was the second one I'm doing. Kind of a whip. I'm kind of running my whips into my finished objects there. Yeah, looks like it's going to rain again. And we have had quite a bit of rain. We are not lacking on spring rains by any means. <laughs> okay, and let's see. And what else have I been up to? Oh, yes, I have a cardigan sweater that I'm working on. So I think that was all for finished objects. So why don't I go into showing you all my whips? So that first one there was was a whip, that little baby blue hat. And now I'm going to pause this and I'm going to get a, another one that I'm working on. Actually, two or three, I think three more. <laughs> three more. Okay, I got those. I hope you can't hear the fan. I had to actually turn the ceiling fan on above my head because it's getting quite warm. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, it's the running around and setting up for these podcasts that really makes me breathless. And then I get overheated and no, I didn't have any coffee today. <laughs> okay, the first, well, actually, it would be second because I had that little hat. So the second little whip I'm working on is something that I have been working on for some time and I'm getting it, I'm getting it near completion. I'm working the back one of my hairs and this is the back this is that brioche this is that brioche crochet with the lace insertion and yes yes it is coming along quite nicely I've almost got it done I've got just this little bit of brioche to finish here go down with my half double crochet then I have to do the ribbing the ribbing will take a little time Here's the front piece, and you can see the ribbing there. I need to block this. I still have not blocked this yet. <laughs> I'll get it, I'll get it done, I'll get it blocked. But I'm the yarn I'm using for this, I mentioned before, this is the second ball. Now these are much larger than this when you get them. This is Fibra Natura Cobblestone in the colorway Parakeet. I don't think I have the label. It might be in my label bag. I'm doing something different this year. I'm saving all my labels just to see just how much yarn I went through in a year's time. And I've already got a Ziploc, a uh, gallon size Ziploc bag full. So, <laughs> yeah, I know, you know, it's kind of funny. I said, hmm, I'm going to be taking it slow this year and slowing down, but I just don't know what happened because I have just been on a very high mojo to do a lot of spring and summer things this year. Um, I think last year I didn't do as many. Last year I made a lot of um, just pullover sweaters. I made a cardigan that I never showed you yet. It was gray and just my own design, but that's the yarn I'm using for this, and I am using... I'm using a two point, a two point five millimeter crochet hook. <laughs> this yes, this is wool. It's a hundred percent wool. I think it is merino wool. 
And it's very light and breathable though, because the way the pattern design is, once I block this, you'll see that lace just kind of open up. So when you're making yourself a top, don't make it too, too large. And I'm holding this up and I can see, well, this is the back. I'm gonna do something with the front. Or no, that was the front, this is the back. Get the confused. Um, I'm gonna hold the front down and then I'm gonna do some kind of little neck shaping here before I connect the two together and do the arms. But you'll see it, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be finished um, by my next podcast and it should be. I've been taking the time to just diligently work on that in the daytime hours because it's a little small crochet hook and um, very fine yarn. It's like a number two weight. I'm going to need to clean these glasses. Hold on. <laughs> I'm looking at you and I'm everything's kind of blurry. I just wear reading glasses, but I need these reading glasses like for a lot of things. But with my eyes, if I was to look at print far in the distance, I have to take these off and I can read it fine, but if the print is close, I need these. So I'm probably farsighted. <laughs> I know, I know, my children keep telling me, mom, you should go get your eyes examined. I know, you practically have to drag me kicking and screaming to go to, you know, places to get checked out. <laughs> That's just how I am, I know. <laughs> I could sometimes be a little bit too stubborn, but that's just my personality. Um. So yeah, that one is near completion. Now for the second one, it's also crocheted, but don't worry, I do have something knitting going on. I've got this done in the body. You saw this last time. There's the ribbing on that. It's really long. And I want to show you my nice stitching on the inside. You know how I stitched that up? I just held it together and matched up the stitches and just did a slip stitch. So this is a slip stitch seam, and I think it looks much nicer and neater. And I'll show you, I'll put this over my other sweater here. I'm just making a, um, I'm not sure if it's gonna be short sleeved or long sleeved. I haven't decided yet, but here, <laughs> I may have to go back a ways to show you. <laughs> there we go stand back further enough away from the camera. But there is the length and it's all the way down to, it's about this far from my knee. So it's a nice tunic length. Um, I love this yarn. This is a red, this is a red heart super saver. Now here it doesn't go all the way over, but that's because if you look down here, I'm doing a very wide ribbing band, and that's what I wanted to achieve. I wanted to make a really wide band. It's gonna overlap so that I can fold the collar down. But I tried, and I, I really did try to line up these colors when I was crocheting this, but I wasn't completely perfectly successful. But it doesn't matter to me. I love the colors. I love this ombre. This is Red Heart Super Saver, and this is in the colorway Violet, and it's the Ombre. As you can see, I've used one whole skein, and this is skein number two, which is almost finished. So quite a bit of work here for only... Uh, little under two skeins and I think the third one will probably finish the ribbing and then I have actually three more but I think number two if I decide to make it long sleeves I have plenty of time and plenty of options I mean I could I kind of like it like this what do you think because spring is here you know and everything and this is kind of a springtime color so I'm thinking about leaving it short sleeve and then maybe putting a band of ribbing, just a short band of ribbing around the arms to cinch it together. Now the pattern, this is my own design, but the pattern stitch is not my stitch. And I'm gonna give you a close up. The pattern stitch was from the YouTube channel um, Bagaday Crochet. 
Crystal over there at Bag a Day Crochet has hit her one millionth subscriber. She's at a million subscribers now. She has tons and tons and tons of patterns that you can go check out for yourself. But there that is. <laughs> so that's that. I'll bring you a little closer now again. Because the next kind of off-center now, aren't I? Because the next thing I want to show you is not long. <laughs> I had a lot of fun making that, and I'm almost finished, and I'm hoping that will be another finished object, too. So now for the fourth thing. This is knitted, and for this, I am using James Seabrett Shush Yarn. <laughs> I call it Shush Yarn. And, um, I forgot the colorway. Let's see if I have it in my drawer. Um, I'm not seeing it. No, it's probably buried. <laughs> James C. Brett, shush. And they got a lot of colors over there. These are much bigger than this. They're 612 yards on here. And if you would like to uh, learn more about this beautiful colorway of yarn, um, see my little, um, it's in my playlist that says tutorials, I do believe. I think it's in there. Um, if you don't know, I have created, if you go to my um, main channel page and you scroll over to where you'll see playlists, all my tutorials will be in that playlist because I still do not know at this early stage of YouTube and everything, how to attach these to the end cap of my video or how to make end caps yet. It might be a feature that my phone will not do. So, because <laughs> I'm holding, okay, so back to this. I'm holding this double with the, um, this is called, not Whisper Lace. Oh, I lost my, I lost my train of thought. Come on, think, think, think. Willow, Willow Stream, Willow Stream. This is Willow Stream and this is discontinued, but you can get yarn like this. It's out there. Just any lace weight, merino, um, the wool and silk will be fine. I did order some extra different yarn back here that I'm going to use in it. <laughs> I did order some Malabrigo. So Malabrigo Lace. You know, this, I'll talk about this too before I show you. This has quite a bit of yardage on this too. I'm trying to, 470 yards on one of these, Malabrigo Lace. It's merino wool. And it was only $7 and something over at Wool Warehouse. This is why I've been shopping over there. They are $5 flat rate shipping as well. So I'm kind of hooked on that. <laughs> Put that aside. <clears throat> so here is my progress. And with those two yarns, I am making a little pullover sweater, long sleeved. I am this far. I've got quite a bit done on the body. It needs to have another probably another eight inches. I want to make sure this is not going to be cropped. I have got to learn because I took my measurements and I have a long torso. So, <laughs> so my sweaters from my armpit where I divide from my arms down to where I want is, is almost 18 inches. That's quite a lot. You know, that's quite a lot. Uh, a lot of patterns call for like 14, but no, 14 is going to be cropped on me. It'll sit at my natural waist. And I want this sweater to sit at my hips. I really want this long because, and I'll tell you, this is the only ball so far that I have used in all this here of this um, sh yarn. There's 612 yards on one of these, I think or 600, yeah, I think it's 612 yards, which is a lot of yarn. 
That's a lot of yarn. I'm thinking probably to finish this sweater, it's only going to take another ball and a half. And probably I have one more of these, so I don't know. I might not have to use the Malabrigo. I just, that was just a backup. But about my pattern, this is my own design. I began by measuring around my head, it would slip over my head, and then I did a one by one rib. My original plan was I was wanting to fold this down, but I just did not like the way that looked. Um, you couldn't see the pur purple up here, and I wanted that color to be seen. So. <laughs> That's why I'm going to leave it. Now, it's a little bit itchy on my neck, and I'm thinking, oh, gosh. Probably going to need to wear a T-shirt under this. But I'm taking my time with it. I'm, I don't going to worry about it being finished until autumn. But I did a lace in the yoke. And like I said before, I'm going to continue the lace down the sleeves. So there that is again. <laughs> One last look there. Isn't that pretty? I love the colors in that. I love the colors. Purple's my favorite. So, yeah, I've still got it on the two needles. <laughs> I better be careful <laughs> that I don't lose my stitches on the other side. I have not got my end caps in there. There we go. A little bit more secure. Okay, so that is all of the whips. Now, I'm going to take, I'm going to pause this and take a little rest because my voice is still, still not completely recovered. And when I talk for a long time, it gets raspy, which is, it's, it's starting to do. So I'm going to take a little break. I'll be right back. Maybe get yourself uh, something to drink because <laughs> I'm going to be going over this with you next. Okay, I'm back and refreshed now. Over here, um, you are looking at my desk where I do all my tutorials. And on my desk, I've got some different cut types of yarns. Now, I do want to state before I get any further in my thoughts, I just wanted to mention, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm going to try to adjust this if I can. Okay, there I am. Now you can see me. I just wanted to mention that I am not affiliated with any yarn companies or anything. Uh, if I was affiliated and if I ever do get uh, sponsored or affiliated in the future, I would let you know. But I'm not affiliated, affiliated with any companies, no Amazon, no nothing. This is all just my own money and thrift store finds and things of the such. Okay? So the first thing I want to show you is some of these wonderful yarns from this one's from Hobby Lobby and this one's called Showstopper I bought that online um, here's another one from this one is from Loops and Threads and this is a mega chunky okay and the third one back here is the same brand, I do believe, Loops and Threads, only in a different colorway. These are all 100% acrylic. This one is, I think this one is 100% acrylic. Let's see. Yes. But this one here, this Yarn Bee Showstopper is... And it's in the colorway Rainbow Riot, by the way. This is a 65% acrylic and a 35% polyamide. And it is really, really soft. Now, what I want to show you <laughs> is what I've been uh, doing with these. So I'm going to pause this here in another second. Boy, it sure is hard to... Keep readjusting that camera and everything. Okay, now, I discovered, and um, I wish I had some footage I could insert here, but maybe another time. I wanted to show you that this stuff is wonderful. 
This is the buzz out there on YouTube. People are discovering that these chunky yarns can be spun to make beautiful yarn. Now, I'm gonna show you a couple of the yarns that I spun with my e-spinner. The first one, let's grab it here. This is from the Loops and Threads. And here is my finished yarn. It's a center pull ball. Take that little paper out. <laughs> I did a YouTube, whoop, and here we have a yarn barf. <laughs> oh, isn't that nice? A nice little knot. <laughs> Just what I want to see. But here is my yarn from that. It's a close-up. Sorry about that little yarn barf. Must be the way I uh, wound it. But there that is. And isn't that nice? The yarn is wonderful with that. Now, you can also, if you don't say you don't have a spinner, or you've never spun, and you just don't want to spin, and you want to work with this roving and make it yarn, I'm going to tell you, you don't have to spin this. You can, if you know how to knit, you can do this. And I'm going to show you. Here is a sample that I knitted. Now, look really close at the sample. I gotta fold it in half. Can you tell just by looking at that that this is unspun? That I am just working here with the roving? See, you cannot tell, can you? So my thoughts are, and I really like this. I'm trying to hold it out so you can see the stitches. That is ever so nice and it's really stretchy. Why would I want to go to all that trouble spinning that when I can just knit with it? Now, for those of you that don't know how to knit and all you know how to do is crochet, well then yes, you would need to spin this because this does not work with crochet. I have tried um, crocheting with unspun, it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but knitting Knitting it does. Now, if you want to know how to do this, go find my playlist, okay? And I have a tutorial showing you how to knit with unspun wool, okay? And this is acrylic, and I did it. And I think it's wonderful. Now, I will show you, as so I'm gonna take this apart. When you get this, Twisted here. Hold on. It's getting so dark out. I don't know how I put that back, but I sure... <laughs> there we go. Okay. So this comes like this. Now what you want to do to the end is find the end. Okay. Pull yourself out about a yard long and just... <laughs> Boy. and just untwist it like this because this is this is going together in two strands just un just untwist it like that okay you're just separating the two now put your hands far apart and now pull pull okay and there it is you see how that broke apart now with this you can separate this again See how easy that separates? Just go all the way down with it. It may catch a little, okay? And when you start the knitting, I just wet my fingers a little bit, give it a little twist, because acrylic is very forgiving. Once you put a little twist in acrylic, it won't come undone, and just start knitting with this. And when you knit, you're gonna have to cast on the old-fashioned way where, the, where you're twisting the yarn. That'll start twisting it for you, so it will um, adhere. But just go check out my video for that. But that's how you work with that. That's how you work with that. Now, I'm really in love with this, the showstopper. This came, it came like this, and here's how it's coming off. Here's how it is off of the nice big ball here. And you want to get a hold of it, like I said before. 
let out a nice long piece and just give a little little gentle pull and there's your roving now you see and you can divide this as many times as you want to as thin as you want to and knit with it and I'm not gonna leave you uh, empty-handed I'm gonna scoot up a little bit I'm gonna show you my sample piece of the unspun results and here it is isn't that pretty isn't that gorgeous look at that look at that I love it I just love it and here is the roving here is the results that is ever so pretty it's a little bit brighter pink than what the camera's showing, but can you tell that that is unspun? Or does it just look like regular yarn knitted together? I can tell you this, this is very, very, very soft. And I made it big enough, I made my little swatch big enough for a pocket because I'm, I'm thinking um, making two pockets on each side and then a, a, a V-neck vest with buttons down the front. With this, this is so pretty. Either that or it's going to be a shawl. But I, I think I think this is beautiful stuff. And this, this piece here was only, I can show you, was only a piece about, and this is about two and a half feet long. And it was a thin little piece. I'm going to split it so you can see. <laughs> It was two of these. That's it. That's that's all to make take this much. Only took two of those. And so I'm thinking that one ball is going to be enough for a vest. With my gauge here, I got um, six stitches to the inch on a number eight knitting needle. But that is so pretty. I really, I really do like that. I love it. <laughs> I love the colors. It's so it's pink with some marled rainbowy. I see why they call it the showstopper. There's a lot of roving on here. There's a lot of roving. This is 10 ounces. 10 ounces of roving. And I think um, Hobby Lobby had a sale a while back when they marked these down to like $5. So where, where are you going to get roving? Yes, I know it's acrylic. And if you don't like working with synthetic fibers, you might not like it, but I tell you, it is next to skin, velvety soft. I really do like it. So that can be done. And if you're a knitter, you don't have to spend a lot of time um, with all that spinning. I haven't spun any of that up. Um, now, let's see, I didn't show you this. But this one here, I did spin into this, this gorgeousness. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? That's like a deep teal with some uh, colors of um, grayish browns, deep blues, turquoise. It's like a jewel tone. That's very pretty too. And even though I did this yarn here, I could crochet something with this, but I really want to knit. I really just want to knit with it unspun. <laughs> so see, go find my playlist and I will, uh, I walk you through step by step by step on that little tutorial on how to do it. So I sure am having fun with that. I love it. I love, I love the way that turned out. And here is some I already pulled apart. It doesn't take a lot either. Like I said, that two little strips and did this pocket and then, oh my, it's not really picking up. If I hold it back a little bit, it is, but it's still, it's a little bit brighter, a little bit brighter than what you're seeing here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I think that was all I had to share. Um, I was thinking about doing um, 
a little tutorial on how to do that, but I already remembered, oh no, I have that, I have that tutorial out there on how to knit with unspun wool, and it's the same thing as the wool. In fact, it's a little bit easier and, and more even to get than with the wool, I think, because the staple fiber, let's see, the staple length, I mean, not fiber, staple length on this, get a piece here, Let's see here what we got. We pull it from the very end. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That is a long, long staple length and it just keeps going. You can get it as thin as you want. I'm going to say that's at least a four to six inch staple length. So that's nice. That's nice. You can get that as thin as you want to. So you could even knit something that's nice. And this is pretty thin and it's very drapey. It's nice and drapey. Now, what I'm going to do, because I want to see how this washes, I'm going to throw, yeah, I'm going to be brave, I'm going to be bold here. I'm going to throw this into my washing machine on my regular cycle, and I'm going to just throw it in the dryer on the regular heat setting, and I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to take careful centimeter measurements of this whole piece, this way and this way, the width and length, the, the length and the width. Length and the width, <laughs> the width. <laughs> get it right, and I'm gonna see if it shrinks or bunches or fuzzes or what's gonna do. So stay tuned for that. I'll update you on that on my next podcast. All oh, this light is kind of messing up now. It's getting really, really dark and stormy. So I just about talked to myself out. <laughs> so. Um, Everyone, thank you for being here today. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Um, I'm, I'm glad that you stuck through to the very end. <laughs> Please be sure to give this video a like if you liked it. So I'm going to say goodbye for now. And all of you take care. I hope you had a wonderful Easter holiday and a wonderful Passover coming if you celebrate that. Take care, everyone, and you have a wonderful week. I'll see you again on the next one. Take care. Bye.